How's it going everybody? My name is Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. You ever see this shot before? Me too. About, I don't know, 20 times now? I've taken this trip from Michigan to Alaska or Alaska to Michigan. It's always a great trip. Lots of time just to unwind and shut your brain off and it's, it's such a special road trip. I think it's the best road trip on this side of the planet. It always starts just like this. Me and the dog in the escort. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get up there, open up the cabin, uh, get to work for the summer, doing concrete work, shooting a lot of videos for you guys. Stay tuned, we'll see you on the road. Morning everybody. Day two already. I didn't even shoot any film yesterday. Why is that? It was already like four o'clock by the time I left. It rained the whole trip. Wasn't much to see. Daisies like to drive. Sometimes I just sleep in the back seat and she drives. But we always end up at McDonald's, don't we? Not bad. The North Shore of Lake Superior. It seems like I always stop here. Even last night in the middle of the night after being a road zombie for you know, 12 hours. Poking along through the hills here and I'm like, oh, I know where I'm at. This is such a nice little spot to stop because it's, it's tucked right off the road and uh, there's hardly any warning for it. And if you don't know it's here, you, you don't know it's here. Lots of wolves around here. Same car, same dog, same coffee filter. <laughs> now we're getting somewhere. Coffee's almost done, Dees. She's ready. She likes her coffee. Same coffee pot, same Coleman stove. I could start every morning just like this. Actually, I do, pretty much. A good cup of coffee. Oh my goodness, that's good. So it's one o'clock in the afternoon on Sunday, May something. I don't know. It's, Daisy and I stopped uh, on just this pipeline pull off somewhere in the middle of Western Ontario. Yeah, take a look. <clears throat> nothing but sand and jack pines. That was a nice nap. Nice place to stop. Middle of nowhere. Let's get back on the road. It's the first thing in the morning on day three, and uh, I just had a deer come through my windshield. Daisy and I are on the Trans-Canadian Highway. Hello? Hello? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's way worse than I thought it was. Wow. 
Hello. Hello. Oh my goodness. Daisy's okay. That's good. My hand, my hand has done better. Well. Could be worse. I could be the deer. Yeah, that's literally all windshield, hey? Yeah. Windshield in the back. And the side one, yeah. <laughs> It's probably totaled. Like, yeah. How would one fix that? Yeah, how would it? It's totaled. Like, like Oshoi, he might, he might. Ooh. What? Like Dwayne Oshoi in uh, Whitewood, he does windows, huh? Well, you can't put a window in. Oh, well, he's, he's more a uh, a fixer, huh? <laughs> the farm fixer. <laughs> yeah. He's just... So here's the aftermath. Daisy and I are, we drove two miles down the road to the next little town. We got a motel room and uh, making some phone calls. But uh, we're in a bad way here. Wow. Almost to the middle of Canada too. You can also see there's a bald spot on my tire where I had to lock it up. come out of the median and I caught it right in front of me and uh, it was just it, it was so fast like all deer accidents are so I'm gonna see if I can uh, make things a little better maybe I can pop that roof out just a fuzz that would help things along when the, or the window guys comes and gets me I didn't think that would work. I feel better about life already because I can kind of see it's possible now maybe to put another windshield in there. Let's see if I can get it a little bit better. I didn't think that was going to work. I am my own hydraulic press, evidently. Honestly, it's not bad. Well, I, I managed to get most of that crushed section out. I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to 
pull the visor clips and I'm gonna try to get these two dents out and get that straightened up a bit then I can actually imagine a windshield going in here well if you've watched this channel before you know I always travel with tools what's the best tool for this job uh, an axe I think I think that's close to as good as I can get it. I'll wait for that little vacuum that the hotel loaned me to charge up. I'll try to finish vacuuming this thing out. And uh, we'll make it work. Well, I think now what I need to do is take a better look at my hand. I got a pretty good cut. Now, and it didn't, it quit bleeding. I really wasn't worried too bad about it. But uh, I grabbed something out there with a good grip and oh, it hurts. I don't, I don't know if there's something in there. I need to clean it up and find out. Could have been a lot worse. Could have had that deer in my lap. The other thing too is I could have got glass in my eyes. Glass everywhere in that car. I don't believe there's anything in there. Well. Thank the Lord for that. Could have been much worse. The deer died. Daisy and I are sitting here in a hotel room vacuuming out the car. So, could have been much worse. I, I do say I would much rather prefer to be out on the road driving with a fresh cup of coffee than sitting here waiting for... I did call the repair guy. And uh, there's a guy down the road, and the, one of the first responders gave me his number. And I called this guy, and I told him, you know, it's per it's pretty messed up. And he's like, he's like, so you just need a windshield? I'm like, yeah, but the roof's pretty messed up. He's like, that's no big deal. He says, I'm used to MacGyver and stuff. <laughs> I'm like, this is this is the guy I need to talk to. But uh, hopefully he'll be. I'd be able to get me out of my way without going backwards financially like a zillion dollars. I don't know what stuff costs around here. I had a lot of close calls over the years on this road and farther up into Canada. That's the first one that, uh, you know, if I, I was going fast enough, if I'd have swerved on that grippy road, I might have rolled the car. Maybe. I don't know. I'll take a shower and take a nap. So what do you do after you hit a deer on the Trans-Canadian Highway? You get a motel room and you make some phone calls. I think I got the right guy. There's a fella named uh, Dwayne and uh, he stopped by the other day. And uh, he's the guy around here to get stuff done. And he's supposed to be out here sometime early today and uh, do a windshield job for me. I don't know what that's going to cost being it's... Uh, Canadian, American, you know, I, I don't know what parts are up here, but um, very thankful that uh, I'm not on the side of the highway sorting out glass out of my clothes like I was last night. But I tell you, I really could use a shop vac because the car is littered with glass. And right now that kind of concerns me more than anything. My list of concerns right now are the glass in the car. Um, Temporarily fixing the back window because it's going to need some kind of help. Finding a rear view driver's side mirror. And got a couple really worn spots on the front tire when I locked it right up because I must have slid 50 feet. We'll see what happens this morning.
There's Daisy and her new buddy Milo. So I've spent the last two evenings here in the middle of Saskatchewan, just outside of the town of Whitewood, and uh, staying at the residence of uh, Dwayne Oshaway and his family. They've really taken fantastic care of me, just went over and above. And right now we're about ready to uh, watch these guys throw the new windshield in. Hopefully in, a, in an hour or two we can uh, start making progress north again. Everybody here in Saskatchewan has been absolutely fantastic, met lots of great people. That's a thing of beauty, Dwayne. Thank you so much. After seeing the, the carnage from the deer accident, I never would have assumed a window would go back in there. Oh, but Dwayne got it perfect. Little MacGyver, and we can do anything you want. It's better than it ever was. Well, not really, but. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is you can't see daylight when you look through the inside? 10 4. You'll have to turn the, the mechanical air conditioning on. <laughs> it is, back window. <laughs> yeah, I, I got that covered already. The back window. I'm really surprised I didn't lose my driver's window because it's scarred up. Oh, I don't sorry. know if it was hoofs or from extra glass or what it was, but uh -oh. I'm amazed that it did not go. Oh, we got you. We got you covered. Man, that's beautiful. Well, what do you think, Twain? Well, you'll be on the road shortly. Fantastic. Where can people contact you in Saskatchewan if they need a repair? Oh, wait a second. I've got it right here. Deco Customs and Repairs. Dwayne Oshaway, and there's the phone number if anybody's broke down on the highway, like somebody I know, close. That's the guy to talk to. We'll do our best to get you going. In a hurry. Fantastic. <laughs> well, Dave, thanks for choosing us to uh, get you going again. Uh, I know we've done it reasonably priced, but if anybody out there falls in need of a mechanic on, on the road, we'll do our best to get you off. Um, we do specialize in Cummins conversions, however we do have the ability to do a lot of MacGyvering techniques to, to keep you going, just as you've probably seen on Dave's car. Thanks for keeping us in mind on your way through Saskatchewan. That's off for now. So there is an amazing example of not only Canadian ingenuity, but also Canadian hospitality. Dwayne and his wife and family put me up for two nights in their little campground right there on their property and uh, straightened the roof of the car back out. I've got a fresh new windshield. I'm headed to Saskatoon to pick up the rear window and I'm just blessed. I'm very blessed. I thank the Lord for running into people like that because the world's full of a, a mixed bag of people and you hardly ever find ones that good. And it seems like every time I have a problem in Canada, I run into the best people. Chance? I don't think so. Thank you, Lord. Well, here we are at about 1.30 in the afternoon on a beautiful sunny Saskatchewan Thursday on the side of Highway 11. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys just a quick view of this place because we've been here before. This is one of my favorite places to stop. It's an abandoned rest area. There's no facilities, there's nothing. There's jersey barriers and a gate in front. But you can pull in here and have the whole place to yourself. About two hours up the road is Saskatoon. So the guys got my windshield in this morning and everything is good. The only issue is the back window was the wrong window. So 
I actually have to get to Saskatoon before 5 o'clock to pick up the right back window. And it's already ordered. It's supposed to be sitting there for me. I just need to get it. That being said, I'm about two hours away and it's about one o'clock. So I should hit Saskatoon by three or three thirty. I should be fine. But if I don't get to there, but if I don't get to the window place by five o'clock, I'm gonna have to spend another night and I don't want to do that at all. So I'll talk to you guys later. I'm heading to Saskatoon. Two years ago I stopped at this very rest stop right before I blew a head gasket on the way into Edmonton. I'm hoping on this trip my bad luck has already run its course because I don't want any more. The head gasket was, was bad but a roof repair and two windows and a mirror. I've had all the trouble in Canada I want to have. So I'm gonna cross my fingers, keep rolling. Morning everybody. It's about 10 o'clock in the morning on day seven. And we're almost to Dawson Creek. Dawson Creek is uh, right on the edge of British Columbia. And it's pretty much the, uh, the very beginning of the Alcan Highway. And from there, it's just one road all the way up. And I always look forward to getting to that point because I don't feel like I feel like if I got stranded out there for some reason You know, it's it's a much more homey feeling area down in the plains. You're, you're pretty out of sorts So I'm looking forward to that Daisy and I stop here pretty much every year It's a little campground across the street. There's a way station But right here at the campground there's a bathroom, and there's a couple campsites right off the highway, but a great place to stretch your legs. Daisy doesn't know it, but when we roll into Dawson Creek this morning, we're going to get McDonald's. Big giant coffee, maybe some Egg McMuffins. It's going to rock. Well, I finally made it into the mountains, and we're really looking at some smoky weather. There's forest fires everywhere. Everything looks kind of misty and shrouded and it's just smoke. Up the road right now to the top of well, one of the highest passes on the highway, Steamboat Summit. You guys have probably noticed how sparsely I've been filming so far. After the deer accident in Saskatchewan, which by the way I was not running a camera when I hit the deer, I barely finished my first cup of coffee for the morning. I've been just uh, Kind of overwhelmed with the sheer hiccups on this trip. So I've just been kicking along, trying to knock down the miles. I, I need to get to Fairbanks in one piece, and uh, I don't want to spend any more time than absolutely necessary. Lots of driving. I stopped for some lunch. Seems, seems like Daisy and I stopped here last trip. Well, here's something interesting. There's the roof of the car. Remember what it looked like about five days ago? Kind of amazed it could be fixed, really. I'm happy that it can be fixed. <laughs> so let's try this. Nice can of chunked light tuna and water. Some salsa con queso. My kids would be freaking out. Be like that's disgusting. Maybe it is. Don't know yet. I got high hopes. You know, like a tuna melt sandwich. 
Kind of the same idea, kind of. You notice this trip has went pretty fast as far as a couple minutes ago we were in Ontario and then we hit a deer and then we spent four days in Saskatchewan. Uh, I've kind of just been pretty happy to get back on the road. Stopping has not been an option. Uh, of course the other thing is a buddy of mine is coming up flying into Fairbanks here in just a couple days and him and I are going to do some fishing. And I kind of need to be there to pick him up from the airport. Let's see how this is. It's pretty much exactly what you'd think it'd be. It's not bad. Tastes like tuna and cheese dip. But good. There are so many things that you can film on this highway, on this trip. But very seldom do you get a night like this, where the sky's getting pink and it's rain, and the mountains are layered in forest fire smoke. That's an amazing picture. That looks like something Bob Ross would have done. Just fantastic. All this scenery just kind of materializes out of the smoke, and you can see the layers in the distance. That's a great way to end the day. Here's an interesting resident of Stone Mountain Muncho Lake Liard Hot Springs. This is the Stone Mountain Sheep. Daisy doesn't really care for him, but I think he's pretty awesome. He's had just about enough. Hey, check that out. That's awesome. <laughs> Give him a break, Daisy. He jumped up on a barrier. She wants to get that sheep in the worst way. That sheep would knock you flat. And how is that for an end to a magnificent day in the mountains? That's just amazing sun going down. Looks absolutely huge. There's a nice looking bear. He's a black bear, but he's pretty brown. Seen a few of them on this trip. Daisy's all about the bears. How are you? Good. A little tour, huh? Yeah, it's a little uh, into the camp trip. Great. Where are you coming from? Finally, finally I've made it to Fairbanks after seven and a half days on the road. I'm driving up my hill to my place with my dog and we've made it through Canada. You see how nice this windshield is other than the bugs. Well, there you go. That's my trip for 2019 from Michigan to Alaska across Canada. Probably one of the more eventful trips I've had. Three days stranded in Saskatchewan, a new windshield, a new back window, uh, a jimmy rigged mirror that I had to replace, car deer accident on the expressway in the middle of nowhere. I'd like to say hi to my friends Ken and Judy Chan who uh, I did not get to visit because I came through their town in the dead of night after being delayed for three days. If you guys would like to see a more in-depth more picturesque version of this trip check out the links down in the description and you can see last year's trip and the uh, the series i shot the year previous lots of wildlife lots of scenery uh, a better version of this video thank you guys so much for watching bush radical my name's dave whipple be radical eh see you soon